Okay, so we got a battery from Alcalcal. Let's open it up. Here's our owner's manual. This is a 12.8 volt battery. It is a 100 amp hour. It can be charged at 50 amps. It can be discharged at 100 amps. Uh, it seems like it maybe it has Bluetooth, so we're gonna have to check that. And here's the battery. It's in a metal tin. We got the terminals up at top with some nice covers that snap on. You got some handles here on the side. So usually these kinds of handles, I've used these before, they're usually <laughs> put on the the other way around. This is uh, actually upside down, but it's oh, it seems to be okay because it works perfectly fine. Uh, typically they're spun around the other way and they work uh, like this. But in reality, it does seem to be more convenient for them to be this way around because you just can grab like that and lift. It works perfectly fine. Actually feels better. So I think they did the right thing there. So the graphics on this battery is actually, it's silk screened. So it's not a cheap sticker. On the sides too, it's all silk screen. So this is actually paint. That's a real nice touch. It's very attractive. And I can also see that underneath the battery terminals, there's some sealant. So they, these appear to be sealed off nicely. And there's some screws holding on the lid. So let's get right into it. All right, we got all the screws off. Let's see if we can open it up now. Okay, so right away we can see there is a Dali BMS and it does appear to be a smart BMS because I see a wire attached to, to the UART. So somewhere in here should be the little Bluetooth to dongle. All right, yeah, I can see the, the little Dali Bluetooth dongle down there. See that little disc down there? And the cells have uh, laser welded aluminum bus bars. I can see that there is a uh, fiberboard insulator between each cell here. And then there's insulation on the sides of the cells where it contacts this metal frame. And it looks like the whole metal frame is held in with some nuts at the base. All right, so it turns out these are like a 10 millimeter. Oh, they're on their type. Ooh. Now watch, it's going to be really hard for me to get these back on. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can get these out now. Oh, yeah. And there's the bottom of the case. There's the, the studs where it, that bolts down. So I guess what I'm going to have to do to get these back on is maybe put some tape around part of this nut to hold it in there or something. If you guys have any, I'll probably have it in before you guys have any ideas, but if you have ideas on this kind of thing, throw it down in the comments because if you got good ways of doing this, I'd like to know. But somehow that nut needs to stay in there. Yep, and there we go. There's that frame that holds the cells. Again, there's the uh, Dali Bluetooth dongle taped on the side. But you can see they've done all the stuff they need to do to protect the cells. They've got fiberboard, pretty much, you know, insulation all the way around. So nothing's going to short out. This is a fantastic build quality. This is absolutely up there with the top of build quality that I've seen. They've got the wires wrapped so these things aren't going to get cut so easily on anything. Everything is nice and screwed down and then topped off with this glue to make sure nothing comes out. They've got six gauge silicone wire 
and the one coming out of the dolly is seven. Uh, so that's the these wires actually come pre-attached to these dolly BMSs, and it is a 100 amp BMS. What kind of cells do we have here? And uh, here's a picture of the QR code. I'm not familiar with this cell. It looks like it says CB5600269. All right, let's put this thing back together and charge it up. All right, so I figured out a good way to hold those nuts. I just lined the inside with some Kapton tape, which you could probably use any tape. It doesn't have to be Kapton. And that holds just enough tension on there to keep it from falling out. And while we're in here, let's test the low temperature protection. All right, so I got the charger hooked up. It's running. You can hear it clamped in right there. Let's try to freeze that thing up. Nothing. Hmm. It says we're still charging at 40 some odd amps there. Let's try this again. No. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I gave it a super blast that time, still charging. All right, so let's check the app settings because I have had these dollies come with some ridiculous temperature, cutoff temperature. So let's check. Looks like our cell voltages are at 13.38 across the board they all have 13.38 so our temperature number one is 26 degrees I want to see if that changes yeah it's going down it went down to eight degrees so maybe we just not hitting it long enough okay I just saw negative 25 Negative 37, low temp, low level charge. But we're still charging. So it did give a, a warning. Okay, so let's look at temp protection. Holy mackerel, guys. So this is what I'm saying about these Dolly BMSs. These things come default with like a super low <laughs> protection. It's a negative 40. Uh, so let's change that to zero. Uh-oh. We need a password. So it says the default password is one, two, three, four. Seems like we're missing. Let's try five, six. Did that work? Yeah, I did, okay. So the default password is one, two, three, four, five, six on this thing. So now I've got it set to zero. Let's try this again. Ooh, cold. There it is. Now it works, guys. So, <laughs> If you get this battery and you actually want the low temperature protection to work, you need to go into the app and go to the temperature settings and change it yourself. Uh, it would be nice if it came that way, a uh, cow cow, if you're listening. Now I'm hearing from some people that some of these companies have got these sales figured out to where they can be charged below freezing. So I don't know. I don't know how much I trust that. And I don't know which sales it is. So for me, I would still want to set that to where it's zero or something like that. All right, so let's just go ahead and let this thing charge up and we'll do a capacity test. So the battery is fully charged now, but before we do a discharge test, let's weigh it. And it comes in at 30.2 pounds. So of course it'd be a little heavier due to the metal casing all right so we got the shunt hooked up to the battery uh, into the inverter into the AC so let's turn on the inverter and let's turn on the AC let's just start off at low here we go we're pulling like 60 70 amps right now that's actually going to settle down to about 30 so we're just gonna let this run and I'll be back when it is complete
right, guys. So we are coming up on pulling full capacity. We're at one percent. About to be at 100 amp hours here. And there it is. 100 amp hours. 1,290 watt hours. So as always, we'll let it keep going until the inverter starts complaining. So we can see what it ends up at. Oh, well, there we go. Inverter's already complaining. So we just <laughs> barely made it. Coming in real close. But we did in fact make it, so there we go. So stopping at 100 amp hours, oh, so stopping at 100.7 amp hours, 1,297 watt hours. Guys, I think this comes to a wrap on the testing this a cow cow 100 amp hour 12 volt battery. Uh, I think it's a fantastic battery. The build quality is really good. This is the first time I've gotten one with a Dali BMS. And the only thing I could say probably about this battery that might be a little negative would be uh, it would have been nice if they had already set the low temperature protection to zero instead of negative 40 Celsius. I'll leave links in the description for you to check this battery out and I'll catch you on the next one.